I think we're going to start. Um, if you're okay, so I'm presenting today. Um, and I'm presenting because um, I think I'm the only one in the CMS team to use a GUI for Git. So now I also have to convince the other te team members that a GUI is great to use for Git. <laughs> anyway, so this is the presentation. I've just shared my screen. Nobody's screaming that they're not, they don't see it. Okay. Works fine. So as I said, um, for those of you, if some of you were here last week, we're going to do a repeat of last week. So it's just to go through the basic basics of Git, why you should use it, and how to use it, and all of this through a user interface rather than command line. So the first um, thing to go through is why do you want to use a version control system? And it's typically to not have this type of issues where you have a directory with lots of other directories. It is, for example, for a paper where you have a draft one and a draft two and a submitted and a submitted v2, but you also have this one and a final and two ones that say that have changes, but you don't know if. The changes from Peter also include the changes from Sarah or the other way around. And you typically end up in a mess that you have to say, mm, let me think about it to know which one you should use. Um, so what version control do is it will keep track of the changes you, you make. It keep track of the order of the changes you make. And you keep track of why you make these changes. Obviously, the why, you have to tell Git why, because <laughs> it can't read your mind yet. But as long as you as you put, as you enter it correctly, then afterwards you can look through it and uh, realize what's going on. And obviously, version control systems have been developed initially to keep track of uh, programs and source codes, uh, but they work with any type of text files. So uh, LaTeX files work. Um, obviously, things that are not text files like um, doc, dot doc and uh, Excel files and whatever don't work as well. You can still use version control, but it doesn't work as well because they need a special program to understand their format. So it's not. Okay, so why now look at Git? Because there are other version control systems, obviously. There are two very big advantages. Git is very, very easy to set up. And it doesn't need a central server, so you don't need to have a IT um, diploma. You can use it on your own and be good with it. And you can use central servers, and there are central servers on the internet, like GitHub and Bitbucket, which offers a service for you. So it's really easy because you can use your own and you can back up on the cloud if you want to. Okay, so now, in addition, why do, would we want to use a user interface for um, Git? Well, if you don't usually use a terminal, then it makes sense to use a user interface. Um, I think personally that version control is highly visual, and you're going to see why um, in the following. And even if you use uh, terminal and uh, command lines, it means you have less commands to learn because you have menus and everything that you just have to click the options and don't remember how to get the same thing from the command line. So which GUI, Git has a lot of GUIs available, some are free, some are uh, pay options. Um, obviously, I got, didn't go through the pay ones. Uh, in the free ones, I would think those three 
is the best I could find, uh, but you're welcome after to check other ones and see how you like them. The only downside is that it only works on Windows and Mac. Um, on Linux, I would say don't bother and just use the ones that are distributed with Git. The only downside is that these have to be started from the command line. So you have to write git k or git gui in the terminal to open them. So that's why we're not using them today. Uh, but otherwise they're fine and they're the fastest out there. All the other GUI, that's the downside of a GUI is slower than the command line. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so I have the source tree window. I didn't register yet to so show to you what happens. I already have a Bitbucket account, so I can click here. Uh, sorry, yeah, click here, I think. Sorry, click here, Bitbucket Cloud. And if you don't have an account, it tells you you can create an account through this link and guess what's the registration. So I do that, it opens the thing you say open source tree you wait a little bit and then tells you yeah you're logged in and then afterwards it tells you the preferences it's good to click the here so that you can set your uh, name uh, for an email address this means that um, when you when you um, commit to your repository, um, everything will have your name and email address attached to it. So if other people look at your work, they know who has done what, which is always good to do. Okay. And so now, um, oh, sorry, you didn't delete that, sorry. Mm. So now it will open another window that typically lists your, reposi your Git repository. And obviously at the start, you don't have any. Um, you have a thing here that's called new. If you click on it, you have a whole sort of ways to get new repositories added. Uh, let's just look at the local ones which are here. You can add an existing local repository. So if you already have a repository, but you haven't used source tree before, you can add it there. You can create one, or you can scan your directory so it will find all the uh, Git repository you already have. So for today, let's create a local repository. When you create a local repository, you can either choose a new uh, directory or you can choose a directory that already exists. So you have to dot there to find your the path you want. And I want to open in that and get a repository that we call shopping. So that's the path to the repository on the file system, and that's the name of the repository, which is shorter. Okay, let's create it. Okay, so now I have this shopping repository here. And if I look in Finder, I now have a directory named shopping that I didn't have before. So SourceTree has created the directory for me. And in this directory, you may not see very well because it's in gray, but uh, there's a, I don't think it's white, no. There's a .git directory, and this directory contains all your git, all that git needs to function, all that makes this directory a rep git repository. You can look into it. It has all sorts of different things that you don't want to know about. So typically, if you were to remove this, you, your directory would stop being a git repository. Okay, so we started, we have a repository, that's great. Uh, we can, in source tree, we can double click on it and it will open another window, which is 
the most important window, probably. Okay. And it typically tells you that, well, there's nothing much in your directory right now. Um, so now let's create a file. And go shopping list in this directory. And then add to it, what do we want to shop? I guess we need eggs, milk, and betty bots. If we've never been. Okay. So now I have saved this file. If I go back to my source tree window, here you see I have a file status window. It tells me I have a shopping list file and with a interrogation mark, if I hover on it, it says it's not tracked. So what does that mean? Um, Git, you have to tell Git what to do. You know, you want, it doesn't do things automatically. So for the moment, this file, Git knows that it exists, but it doesn't know what to do with it. Do you want to keep track of these changes in it or not? Um, so you could want to keep track. And one way of, do that, of doing that is to click here. The only thing I don't like in source tree is the default view here, is that when you click here, it doesn't seem to have anything happening except clicking there. But in Git, there are several things that happen. And I prefer this view, which, which is split view staging. Because in Git, you have two, you have three areas. You have your working space, you have what Git calls the index, and then you have the history. And typically, the untracked file is an unstaged file. Git doesn't know what to do with it. When you click there, so tree helping you and telling you what to do. It becomes a stage file. That means it is ready. You're saying to Git, I want to commit this. I want you to record this file. And if we go back a bit, here you see you have shopping list and it shows you what the file content is. And it's like a normal writing of the file. Once it is staged, this has changed. It suddenly became green with a plus in addition. That means Git will record that you added all these three lines in this file. And so to commit, you click on at the bottom on commit message and you put um, the information about the commit, which can be initial commit in this case. You could put start of the shopping list or whatever you want. That's where you, that's where you tell Git why you've made the same changes. So be um, imaginative. You can give just a short commit or you could have several lines. Um, it works as well. So, and then you click on commit. And then it tells you, oh, there's nothing to commit. Oh, what happened? So it didn't erase the file. Your file is still there in your um, directory. Yeah, there. But the thing is that now all your, your changes have been tracked and recorded. And so if you go to history, you see that now you have a dot there. And it says your master. So it's in white. Yeah, it's not in white. And it tells you you have one commit that says initial commit. And there's a commit ID and my name and when it was done. And at the bottom, you have a bit more information on the commit and the difference, like what the commit contains. It contains three new lines in the file, in this file. Okay. So now, if we, sorry. Now let's add something else. Add the um, in the list. Okay. So what happens in source tree? Okay. 
So we are still in the history panel. You have your initial commit, which was done before there. And then you have something that's called uncommitted changes. So Git recognizes you have done some changes that are not tracked by Git yet, but they are in your working directory. And it tells you that it's in shopping list txt, and you see the icon has changed because in this case it's not a new file, it's a modified file. But it is unstaged, so you're not in a in a place to commit it. So you can stage it, and then it becomes a stage file. And it tells you what will be in the commit. And then you can think, oh, I forgot something. So I wanted to add something else. Um, I want, in fact, to say that we just want plain jelly beans. And so now what happens? Okay, I still haven't committed changes, but here it has changed. You see that I see shopping list appearing twice. Okay, I still have shopping list in the stage files. And this one just shows the toilet paper. Doesn't show that I've changed Betty Bot Savy flavor beans for jelly beans, because that's what I have staged before. And then in the unstaged files, I can see the Betty Bots to jelly beans. And what's interesting is that it shows toilet paper as something that was already there because it's already in the index. Okay. And so now what happens is if I commit, it will only commit the toilet paper change. Okay, so if I go back to going back to the history, you see the initial commit, and then I have another commit now, which is called emergency addition, and this one only has a toilet paper. And I still have uncommitted changes, which is the jelly beans something. Okay, so with you, all of this, you can get it from the command line by different commands. What I like with the GUI is that you get it in one window all together at once. And so let's just um, add a few other things for later, just to, and then some bread. Oh no, maybe, maybe I wanted to commit first, sorry. We just want enough commits so that we can see what's happening. So I want to commit this, I'll click on the commit button, and I say, where on the models, I commit. Okay, so now I don't have any uh, uncommitted changes, just three commits. Now, if I add something else, apples and bread, Go back here, and there, let's commit it again. So you see, each time you do some change that you want to keep track of, it's the same. You just go back there and stage, and then you write a message of why you, why you made the change and commit it. It's good to have small commits, because if you make a mistake, uh, Git can uh, allow you to easily uh, undo the mistake, but if you have a, a big commit that has a lot of things with something you want to change and something you don't want to change, then it gets a lot more complicated to use Git for doing that. Okay, the other things you can do with Git is um, look at differences more than here, because here you, see you can see the differences commit by commit. But if you uh, select several commits, it will show you the differences over all of these commits. You can select from wherever to wherever. Oh, sorry. It's for selecting everything, it's a shift uh, click or whatever it is on Windows. 
So you can easily see um, what has been done previously. Okay. Okay, so now let's say, oh, you're not sure you really want to have this shopping list. All right, that's here, this one. And you're kind of thinking, oh, actually, I like the idea of being a wizard. So I want to come back from here and add stuff from this point. So if you do control click, you get a lot of options of things to do, a lot that we're not going to talk about today. You have one that is called checkout. So checkout in Git, it means I want this state to be my, my in, I want to have my working directory to be at this state. Um, if I do that now, so string gives me a whole message that I need to confirm change working copy. And it tells me that doing so would make your working copy a detached head, which means you won't be on branch anymore. If you want to commit after this, you'll probably want to either check out a branch again or create a new branch. Is it is this okay? It doesn't really tell you so, but it's typically a bad idea to check out something and become in a detached head. So every time you see a, a message, I say, oh, you're going to be in a detached head, you think, oh, no, thank you. So we're going to cancel. <laughs> and the way not to be in a detached head is actually to create a branch. So branch is what allows you to have, to quickly switch from one state to another state of uh, your working document or whatever you're doing. So again, if I do control um, click, instead of checkout, here I have branch. So I can click there and it says new branch. Okay. It says my current branch is called master. My new branch is going to be called wizard. And it says here specify commit. That means that it will start from this commit. And I, can, I have a pick one, it opens thing, so I could change another commit. I could say, oh no, I, I want to start from this one, or this one, or this one, whichever. Okay? So I just have to choose whichever commit I want, and then I click OK. And check out new branch, that means that my working directory will be in this new branch now, that I will show you afterwards. So if I create a branch, yeah, it works on white. Okay, so in my history now, I have two things, one called wizard and one called, brand, called master. So that's my two branch names. And you can see this one is bold, that means that's my current state of my working directory. So now if I go to my text editor and I re reload the file, suddenly, it has toilet paper and Betty Bots heavy flavor beans again in it. Okay, so I've completely, I didn't, I didn't delete it, any of the changes I've made, but I, I'm, I have been able to go back to a previous state of what I had done without deleting anything, without creating a new directory or whatever. And then I can, um, Check out this branch again. So it's just also control click, check out, and then I'm in master and I can reload this file again and I'm in the other head, whatever. Okay, so let's go back to wizard. And then now let's do some additions and let's add some better beer. Okay. Okay, so you see what happens here in the history. You still have your two branch master and wizard. Now they have two different colors uh, because you haven't committed changes. So wizard is potentially 
will have commits that are not on the same, not all commits are on both branches. So if you go to uncommitted changes, again, you can stage, commit, um, B, commit. And now that's your history. So you see that without as all the commits that are in blue, was master uh, as the commit in red, and you see here the little thing, it has also the two commits in blue there. See, this is a common, common history, and then it branch out here. So that's one of the things I like about uh, GUI is, is that this history is very um, simple to have and you can still have all the differences and everything at the same time. Hi, actually I have a question. Like yeah. you add a butter beer, so it changes into the wizard or it directly changes into the master? So I was, I have checked out the wizard branch so when I commit, it will commit only to the wizard branch. So now if I check out the master branch and go back to my file and revert the file, it doesn't show the better be there on the master. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So only the so when you commit changes, it will commit only in the branch you have checked out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, to to know what branch you're in. Sorry. Sorry, which one does it share? So if you if you open the branches menu here, you see one is uh, bold and one isn't, and one other thing there. Mm -hmm. This one is the one that is checked out, and this one isn't. So if now I check out. Without, hmm. you see it has changed. This one is bold with the dot in front. Okay. So this way you can keep track of which branch you're on, because that's important. You know, I mean, it's not a big deal if you commit something to a different to a branch you didn't want to, because Git is flexible enough that you can move it across. Except you probably don't know that from start, and you would have to look on the internet how to do it or something, but yeah. Okay. It's always better to commit even if it's badly committed than not to commit. Okay. Okay, okay so now I have two states. I have my wizard branch and my master branch, okay? And let's say I want to merge them. I don't need them two anymore. I just want one, sta one state. Okay, so I want to merge the master branch into wizard. So to do that, I check out wizard, which is that, and then I click the merge button at the top. Okay. Here it tells you you can just pick whatever commit. I would strongly advise not to pick the to pick a commit that is at the head of a branch, so that has the name of the branch next to it. Um, because if you're just starting, don't get to do complicated stuff. So you just choose the commit you want. So because you were at the head of wizard, you want to commit master in it. And you click OK. OK. So here it tells you match conflicts. You know of merge conflicts in your working copy that need to be resolved before continuing. So it tells you you can do this by selecting the conflicted files and using the options under the resolve conflicts menu. I wouldn't do it this way. Um, we can check the resolve conflicts menu, but it's typically not detailed enough to, uh, to work in all cases. So it's better to show you the way that would work in all cases. So if you see the history here, also you see in gray, it shows that you want to put master into wizard, but it hasn't been done yet because it's gray. And if you look at the uncommitted changes, sorry, uncommitted changes, here you see you have bits that are stage, 
and it's also unstage, right? And that's because you have conflicts. So to resolve the conflicts, you go back to your text editor, you open your file, and you see it looks like this. So what you see is, sorry, no, undo. What you see is these lines. So you have all these superior sign head, this equal line, and this line. Okay, so the head one, so between head and the equal line, it's what was in this file on the wizard branch, because that was the branch you had checked out. Okay, and wh what is between the equal and master is what is in the file on the master branch. And typically, it tells you which version do you want to keep. <laughs> Or do you want to keep one of these or a mix of both or what do you want to keep? I don't know. I need in human input. So to do to resolve the conflict, you remove the special lines and then you decide on what needs to be done. In this case, let's say we don't want the jelly beans because we really do really like being a wizard, but we still want some bread. Okay, so it's a mix of both versions. And then you save your file and then you get back here and you see here it shows you something simple is that you want to add apples and bread to your file. It still shows you stage and unstage so you still have to stage everything to make sure everything will be committed and to tell git it's fine I have solved the conflict I'm, I'm happy with how it looks you I'm happy to come in. And if you put commit, the GUI will automatically put a message. You can change it, but there's no real reason to do so. Um, yeah, it tells you there was some conflicts on shopping list that TXT, you could get rid of it, you could leave it. Um, I would leave it because that gives more information for later. So you can come in. And here you know, you see that master doesn't change. It still shows that it's, it's still at the add apples and bread thing. But wizard has a new commit. And I can show you the file in wizard. And the file now has eggs, apples, milk, toilet paper, the beans, better beer, and bread all what that we wanted. And if I check out master, and I did the file, it doesn't change. It's still the ones with the jelly beans and bread. It doesn't change. So I still have two, two states, okay? Except the wizard one is a combined version of the old wizard with master. I did some stuff from master. Okay. And you see that the history show you exactly that, that they've branched out, some things were added on both sides, and then we have merged back into it. Okay. Is there any other questions? Now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, as I told you before, it's good to have a short commit because then Git can help you to undo something if you want to. So we're going to see how to do that. Oh no, one more thing I wanted to do. Everything from the start to now is typically what you're going to do 90% of the, no, even almost 100% of the time with Git is really recording your changes. Um, make a branch if you want to try something out or, you know, and, and, and merge back. So with this is really like what you're doing all the time. But sometimes you want to change what you've done and um, delete or remove what you've done. So let's say we want to remove the toilet paper from the list. 
we could simply go, because that's simple, we could go back to the file and remove the line and commit again. But uh, let's do it with Git. So we could select this commit that added the toilet paper. Uh, Ctrl click gives us all the options. And here you see an option that say reverse commit. So if you click on it, it asks you to confirm because, you know, <laughs> that uh, you're going to change uh, a change you've done before. So now if I click OK, OK, I now have a new commit that says revert emergency addition. And what did it do? Well, it tells me here in the difference. You see it's red now with a minus. That means it has removed the line with toilet paper. And I can check that in my shopping list file. You see, there's no more toilet paper in it. Obviously, if the commit had more things than what I wanted to, re to reverse, I couldn't do that like that automatically. So that's why. Okay, well, there is one last thing you get, can be um, very useful to know about, especially if you are doing some code development. Um, I guess it can happen also with LaTeX or things like that, but sometimes you have some files, like if you think of it, if, you've, if you compare some Fortran code, you get all the executables and everything that are created and you don't really want to track them you know you want to track the source code but not the executables it doesn't make sense to track the executables um, at the same time if you don't do anything it will always appear as uncommitted changes what you get will always nag you what do you want to do with this far kind of thing so you don't want to be nagged all the time about those um, I guess with LaTeX, it could be like the PDF after the, the, the PDF version of your of your text. You don't really want to uh, keep it in Git. So let's go in our editor and create a file. Um, let's say it's a binary. Uh, we don't really want to uh, keep a binary. Let's save it. So. You see, in my um, finder, I have not too far shopping list and something bin, dot bin. In source tree, if I go back too fast, that is, it will be here. Um, it tells me I have something bin that's a, with an interrogation mark, that's an untracked file. Um, what do I want to do with it? Well, I'd like it to ignore it. And so Git has a system to ignore file. And this is through a special file that's called dot git ignore. Okay. So you can you can you just create the file, you know, you the, just create the file, it just has to be called dot git ignore and be uh, in your repository at the head, at the top of your repository. And then you can tell it which file to um, ignore. You can be very specific, so you can say, I want to ignore you know, only something .bin. Or you can be generic using um, glob patterns from uh, Unix. So you can say everything that is called .bin, for example. And it doesn't have to be just .bin, you can say whatever. Okay, and then you save the file, and then let's see what happens here. Okay, you may not have seen it, but suddenly in my stage file, I have the dot getting no, but I don't have something dot bin. If I look at Finder, I still have something dot bin, and I have the dot getting no. So Git has read the dot getting no file, and 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 did what you told it. To do you say it ignoring the dot bin file even before you um, commit the dot getting no file 
And so after you can, you, you still need two committed getting the file. Um, even if it's a special file for git, it still needs to be committed and tracked, just like the other files. So you can go back to your history, and then you see that you have add git ignore, and even here you don't see anything about something that be, you don't know, git doesn't show you that the bit file is here, okay? Because you told it it's not none of your concern. So if you want to know the file is there, you have to go to the finder. Okay, that was about everything I wanted to say. Um, obviously, you can see here there are a lot of buttons I didn't press or didn't interact with. Um, it's because you can obviously do a lot of other things with Git. One thing that will be touch upon, uh, not next week, because next week we're not running the training because of the holidays and everything. Uh, but the week after is the remote. Um, a remote directory can, a remote repository can be about anything, but most of the time it's something you put on the cloud or on another machine to back up your work. And so we're going to discuss uh, next time how to use those. Um, and you can see that in those three, in the other windows that I didn't interact much with, there's a local and remote. So if I click on remote, because I use Bitbucket, it should come up with, I have some uh, repository and Bitbucket and it just shows them there. Uh, and local is what is on my machine currently. Okay. And all the other things, um, don't worry about them unless you need them one day. <laughs> so, any question? <laughs>